Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is a requested video about the king root pump. I'm going to tell you the basics of how we feed Hanya, which will be different on how you feed your child, for example, whether it's bolus feed versus continuous feed, and how fast the flow rate of the volume is. But basically, I sit most of the day right here every four hours for 45 minutes to one hour at a time. And I sit right here on the couch with Hanya where I have the IV pole set up right next to the couch and I can easily access it. I hold Hanya for the duration of the feed. We bond and watch some TV just depending on my mood. So let me bring you guys closer here. I can easily adjust the height of the pump to whatever is most comfortable for me. The kangaroo pump is what we were using since we were discharged from the NICU and our DME company tried to make a switch over to the infinity pump which is a different feeding pump and we stuck with the kangaroo. There are just some differences that didn't suit our needs with the other pump and I can talk more about the infinity pump in depth in another video if you'd like. So mobility is not an issue for us, nor is nighttime continuous feeds, so I have the pole set up at a constant height and location. Okay, let's talk about the kangaroo bags. I'm pretty sure everyone probably already knows about the bags, so I'm going to briefly go over them. The DME company provides us with a brand called the Covidian brand, and there's another brand that the DME company also provides. It's called the Tyco Healthcare brand. Both are purple bags, but they're just a little bit different, and I happen to like the one that comes with a yellow paper. Either one works perfectly fine, but that's just my preference. Let's tear open the bag at the perforation and take out the purple feeding bag. The bag is the Covidian Entero feeding bag, and it comes in different sizes depending on the feed amount. We order the 500 mLs, which is the smallest size. The top can be flipped open to pour in the formula or pushed down to secure it closed. Tear the paper seal that's wrapped around the tubing. These are two important parts of the tube that will fit into the pump and I'll show you in a little bit how to insert it properly. Lastly, the end of the tube, make sure you lock it in by twisting it and this fits directly into your child's G-tube. Before hanging the bag on the IV pole, let me show you how the pump will alert you if a bag is unloaded. This is the battery sign. I have it on charge, so this indicates that the pump is charging. To turn the pump on, press the lower right button. The menu will show Keep Settings from a Previous Setting or Clear Settings. For now, I'm going to press on Keep Settings. The top of the screen shows Load a Set and there's a blinking icon that alerts you to first insert a bag into the pump before continuing. So, let's do that! To turn the pump off, I leave the button pressed as it counts down from 3. Now, we can take the bag and place it on the IV pole at least 6 inches above the pump with the front facing outward. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to flip open the blue top. There's a diagram that shows how the tube should be placed into the pump. So there are two parts of the tube, a more circular piece and a flat cylindrical part. First, we're going to take the circular part with the tab and slide it into place in the front slot. Wrap the tube around the black rotor and you can pull the tube. It's really stretchy, so don't be afraid to pull it to get it into place. In the beginning, I was always afraid of it snapping, so I had a hard time getting it right. So you just stretch it into place and push it down into the second slot securely. Make sure the tubes are out of the way before closing it. Okay, now that we have it set up, press the on button. We have the options keep settings and clear settings. And when you press keep settings, it shows that the set is loaded. You put it in right and we're good to go. Now, let me turn it off and go back to the menu with the options of keep settings and clear settings. Let's press clear settings. This will reset the settings back to zero mLs per hour and zero mLs fed. There are now three options, prime pump, adjust feed, and lastly, more. When you press more, it opens up another menu. I've never needed to use it, but it has the options 
Buzzer history languages continue since intermittent and done. I don't need to change any settings, so I'm going to press done. First thing we're going to do is adjust the feed. So you press that, and it opens feed rate and feed VTBD or volume to be delivered. I've used this setting before, but I found that the pump isn't accurate with its measurement. So I'm going to press feed rate. And this part is very user friendly. How many milliliters you want to feed your child, whether you want to do it per hour or even per minute, it's all adjusted here and everything is individualized. If you already know how many milliliters your child is fed per hour, you can easily adjust the rate. For example, our daughter's feed rate is 120. So one, two, zero, mLs per hour. It's that simple. And you press enter, the feed rate will now show 120 mLs per hour. But let's suppose you actually need to calculate the feed rate. Let's go back into the feed rate settings and do some math. Suppose you want the rate set to 120 milliliters in 45 minutes. To calculate, divide the minutes by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 45 minutes divided by 60, which is 0 0.75. Then you divide the amount you want delivered, which is 120 milliliters, by 0 0.75 and you get 160. So that means for 120 milliliters over 45 minutes, you have to change the settings to 160. Let's do another one because I know that's confusing. Let's say you want to do 120 mLs in 30 minutes. So divide 30 by 60, which is 0 0.5. Then divide 120 mLs by 0 0.5 and the feed rate equals 240. Great, adjust the rate by pressing the buttons and you're set to go. What I really like about the Kangaroo interface is how easy it is to change each separate column without having to go through the entire cycle to get to the number you want to be on, like some other pumps. Now that you have the feed rate set, and before pressing run, we need to first prime the tube to push out all the air from the tube and run the formula to the tip. To do that, press done, and it takes you back to the first screen. Press prime pump. It opens up another menu and gives you a flashing warning to disconnect the tube from the patient, which can be harmful if you push all that air directly into your child's stomach. The two options are now auto prime or hold to prime. Now I'm going to add a little formula into the bag. Press auto prime and the machine will start to prime on its own. You can watch how quickly the machine primes the tube, or you can fast forward if you don't want to. The machine will stop on its own, and it usually leaves some air in the tube that still needs to be primed. To do that, press hold to prime until you see a few drops of milk at the tip of the tube. And it's primed. Press done, and now you can run it. In the event you find bubbles in the tube, it's not usually an issue, but if your child is very sensitive and has really bad reflux and you want to remove them, let me show you how. Place the end of the tube back into the top of the bag. Press hold to prime to let the bubbles out. A yellow light lights up when you press hold during a feed. You'll be given the options to clear the volume, adjust the settings if you want to change the feed rate, resume in minutes, and check history. This shows how much you have fed your child so far. When you're ready to exit, press done. After 10 minutes of holding, an alarm will sound showing hold error. It will give you the option to either continue or to shut down. Let's power it down. To unload the bag, pull on the back piece of the tube and unwrap it around the rotor. Then slide the tab out. And you're done!
To travel with your pump, first close the tab on top of the bag and remove it from the IV pole. Cap the end of the tube. Loosen the handle on the pole clamp to remove the pump. When I'm traveling, I like to take along this bag, and I've talked about it before, it's by the brand Neat Pack. What's great about it is that it comes with an attached hook that can fit over almost anything. And it also has a pretty deep pocket. Although this bag was originally intended to be a toiletry bag, I use it for the kangaroo while traveling. I can fit the pump perfectly into the pocket, and I can take the rest of the tube and the bag and pack it inside as well. And it's as simple as that. I just zip it up and it's good to go. There is a pocket on either side of the bag to place the formula when I'm on the go. The bag is compact enough that I can pack it into the diaper bag. When I need to feed Hania, I simply unzip it and hook it onto the side of the stroller. The last question is, what to do with a used bag until the next feed time if your bowl is feeding? What's the best way to keep bacteria from growing? There have been a lot of suggestions of washing the bag with sterile water, pour the water into the bag, and rinsing it out. However, research has shown that the best way to prevent bacteria growth is by placing the bag into the fridge. After 24 hours, be sure to throw away your bags. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!